Uh, anybody here read The Botany of Desire? Anybody? Okay, a few of you have. You know, one of the first chapters is about apples in the United States. And apples, when they were first grown in the United States, weren't these beautiful, sweet, uh, you know, highly bred, grafted, you know, fresh eating apples. People didn't grow apples for that. They grew what we nowadays call spitters, where you take a bite and go, yeah, I can spit it out. But they made great cider from that. And alcohol from cider was, um, was made almost on every farm as people moved from the east out to the west. And of course, um, making alcohol from corn was essential, even as far away, or even I should say as close as Pennsylvania was to the east coast. The Mongahela Valley was a huge alcohol production area because farmers couldn't get their corn to market without it rotting. You know, it would rain, it would have, you know, insects would have trouble, and it, and it wouldn't sell for very much, something that farmers still today have to deal with, which when you have a raw material, nobody wants to pay much for it. So the farmers in Mongahela fermented their corn and made whiskey. In fact, for those of you wondering where whiskey comes from, it's basically corn wine, which is distilled and becomes corn liquor. So just like brandy is the, the distilled product from wine, whiskey is that from corn. So uh, the farmers in Mongahela were transporting their alcohol to the East Coast and selling it for a pretty penny and it didn't go bad, it was a value added product. And this made a lot of sense and I think what happened in that case is kind of a, became a paradigm that has carried through to this day, which is um, the people who were powerful in this country were not the farmers. They were the big eastern landowners. And when it came to paying for the Revolutionary War, the first proposal was a property tax because suddenly these guys all had valuable property. It wasn't owned by the king anymore. Well, the big property owner said, screw that noise. We're not going to pay for it. Let's shove it off on the little people somehow. And so they put a sin tax, an excise tax, on alcohol instead. Well, the farmers in Mongahela said, no way, we didn't fight this revolution to get rid of the king and his unfair taxation, just to have you guys tax us, you pay it. So George Washington raised the first draft in this country, drafted 20,000 men, marched them out to Pennsylvania, and they were not in a good mood when they got there, and they killed 200 farmers, okay, to put down the, what was called the Whiskey Rebellion. So our first, our first draft in this country was not to defend ourselves from a foreign land, it was to put down rebels and radicals in this country, and they were farmers. So they killed the 200 farmers, of course it didn't stop the production of alcohol, and of course the big distilleries on the East Coast, although they first um, were objected to the regulation of alcohol, they said, wait a minute, we can handle this, the small guys can't, so they actually ended up supporting it and it turned out that George Washington was the biggest distiller in the United States. So he was using an army to go out and put down his personal competitive um, opponents, you know. Sounds a little vaguely like today, doesn't it? So what happened with, uh, with all that? Well, basically the farmers found out that they, you know, couldn't do things in the open anymore, so they generally ran off their, their booze at night, and they became known as moonshiners. So the whole term moonshiners came from farmers paying off their land. And farmers have been paying off their land for a long time, growing illicit, making illicit uh, alcohol, um, a tradition that has been carried through in different forms up till today with various other products. So, you know, there's, these themes keep recurring over history. You'll see a few more as we go along. <laughs>